Hi, I am Dana K. White. I am the author of Decluttering at the Speed of Life, and I'm here to answer your decluttering questions today. I'm going to be taking some questions ahead of time or at the beginning from that were submitted at askdanakwhite.com. I feel like last time I did that, my I think maybe I'm supposed to go askdanakwhite.com, and it's one of those like flippity flip things that's weird here. Um, welcome to my live stream unedited. Yes. Uh, so I'll be answering questions that were submitted ahead of time. And then I will take questions from those of you who are able to watch and join us live. So I know I didn't schedule this one ahead of time to give you any kind of warning, but I try to be here on Tuesdays at noon central if I'm able. Okay. Uh, let's see. First question. Oops. Let's see. I think it's this one. Uh, I will be reading the question as it was asked in uh, the spreadsheet. And oh, don't tell me that my thing just updated to go back in time. Hold on, here we go. Okay, I had it queued up. Uh, let's see, this gonna be a good one y'all. Here we go. First question is make sure this matches. Like I said, where would I look for first, particularly there? Okay, here we go. Three years in with your methods and have made huge changes, but I am still stuck on where I would look first, particularly for new items. For example, I bought a new Samsung tablet in the box is the warranty and little pin thing to open it. I honestly don't know where I would look for the box. It's on my bedside cabinet now. If I don't keep the box, the pin and warranty don't have a place I would look for it other than the bedside cabinet. How do I establish new homes for things? This is a great question. For new stuff, it can feel like, but I don't know where I would look for it first. But the beauty is to remember, I don't know if beauty is the right word. The thing is to remember that you only ask yourself the question, where would I look for this first about things that don't already have a home? Okay. And I always want to point out when we say, how do I establish new homes for things? We don't do this the way that I used to do it. Okay. I mean, this not, I don't teach to do this the way that I used to do it, which I feel like most of us especially people like me get into this thing of like, I've got to figure out a home. I've got to create a home. And instead I say, I'm going to identify the home according to where would I look for this first? That is its home. That is how I establish the home is asking myself where I would look for it first. Okay. In the decluttering process, anything that I already know where it goes, anything that has a home is, it goes to that home during step two, which is the easy stuff. Easy stuff means that it already has an established home, but for whatever reason it's here, right? So I'm only asking myself the question where I would look for it first if I, if I don't have a home for it, okay? So it goes the same, it goes with the same thing when you have new things coming in. OK, so this new item that's coming in, you ask yourself, where would I look first for the warranty? And the place that pops in your mind as the first place where you would look for the warranty is its home. That is how you establish its home. OK, so uh, if the if the first thing that pops in your mind is on my bedside table and you don't want it to be there. Then you say, okay, if my bedside table was clear and didn't have just stuff randomly that I don't know where to put it on it, where would I look for it first? Which your goal is for that stuff to not live on your bedside table, right? Like for according to what, what your question is. So you, uh, and, and then as far as the little pin to open it up, if I needed a pin to open up my uh, Samsung tablet, where would I look for it first? Okay. Now, I have a place for my little iPhone do lollies, right? For, for picking something, uh, you know, opening it up or whatever. Uh, I have a place where I would look for that first. It happens to be 
the place where I keep, it's a, it's a tub about this big. I keep cords and random electronic accessories go in that container. That's where I would look for it first, but I don't go, okay, this is a, oh, should it go in? Should it go with the, should it go where I put my, keep my phone? Should I go with it? Instead, I just say, if I needed this, where would I look for it first? And the place that pops in my mind, that's where it needs to go. So maybe it's not that kind of a space for you, but we go with that and it works the same for new things as it does for existing things, because we only ask that question when we don't know where something goes anyway. Okay. So it's not, where does this go? It's where would I look for it first? Okay. Not completely confident it's going to be there, but the more that we do that, the more that we trust ourselves to actually put things in a place where we're going to be able to find it in the future. And then that builds upon itself. It builds that confidence. Okay. Uh, next question. My husband who is normally amazing does not understand what I'm trying to do. I was decluttering a picture frame that has bounced around my house on floors behind doors, empty for five years. I put it in my donate pile. Husband said, it's ridiculous to get rid of a perfectly good picture frame. Can you talk about why it's okay to get rid of the picture frame or other perfectly good items if you never use it and it floats around your house? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's that letting myself, first of all, it's the container concept, which in this conversation that you're going to have with your husband, you don't need to go into the container concept. It simply goes into, really, the way this plays out is, I don't have a place for it. I mean, like, that's what it comes down to. It is a good picture frame. The discussion has nothing to do with the value or the beauty or the perfectly goodness of this picture frame. It comes down to, I don't have a place for it. Whether I don't have a place for it because there's simply not enough space, whether I don't have a place for it because it doesn't fit my decor, whether I don't have a place for it because there's no actual pictures that I want to put in that particular frame, whatever. I don't have a place for it. I agree. It's a perfectly good frame, but I don't have a place for it. And when I don't have a place for something, then it's clutter and I need to let it go because I'm trying to get my stuff, our house, however you want to say it, down under my clutter threshold where I can keep it under control. You know, like I think it always is good to just focus on what can I handle? If clutter is anything that consistently gets out of control, it's anything I can't personally handle. And so I take that on myself and I say, you know, I agree it is a perfectly good frame, but I don't have a place for it. And therefore I, I, I can't handle it. I need to get it out of here. So it'll be easier for me to manage the house. Right. So that's, that's the way that conversation uh, would go. Let's see. Here we go. Next question. My husband randomly buys large bulk quantities of snack foods, candy bars, etc., to take to work so he doesn't have to buy them from the vending machine. I'm glad he's saving money by doing this, but we truly don't have the space to store them in the kitchen except on the counter, which drives me crazy. And he complains about lack of counter space when cooking too, ironically. Do I simply need to declutter other items, i.e. like things I use, eat, need to use for cooking to make space? Um, okay. So on this, uh, number one thing I would say is, is there any way he could go ahead and take these things to work? That's something that I, um, you know, if, if my husband has some things for work, I'm like, is there, is it possible? And I don't know what his work situation is, if that's even a thing, if he's got an office or a locker or whatever, like, is it possible to just go ahead and take these things to work? Sometimes it's one of those things where you're like, oh yeah, I can totally do that. Right. So, you know, that would be my first top ideal suggestion if it's possible. If it's not possible, um, I would, uh, say that it doesn't necessarily have to go in the kitchen. Like it in, in the, the actual question, it says something about, do I have to get rid of other food or whatever? And um, that might be, and when you look at it that way, it often will help to reveal, oh, that's right. I've got an entire 
section of my pantry devoted to whatever. And actually all that stuff is expired because we don't eat that kind of stuff. Right. So, so it may very well be possible for you to one in one out because it does need to have a place. Right. And this is something that he actively does. And so, you know, if it needs to be in the house, then it deserves space. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the kitchen. It could be in a, a different place in the house. Maybe there's a place where his work stuff is like his, um, you know, specific clothes or things that he takes to work or whatever. Uh, it's possible that it could be could be there. Okay. I would ask him, where would you look for it first? If the counter was clear so that we can cook, because you mentioned something in the question about, uh, you know, he gets frustrated about not having enough counter space to cook. So it's like, okay, well, let's clear this counter space. So if these weren't here, where would you look for them first? And then use that as a, as a thing. And sometimes it'll mean, oh, okay. Oh, you would look for it first in this cabinet. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to get rid of something else. And then that can trigger the, oh, wait a minute. No, actually that shouldn't, you know, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying, right? Hopefully I'm making any sense whatsoever. All right. Too many tabs open. What strategy do you use when you must find something, but it's not in the places you thought you put it? I soon find myself as lost as the item. Yeah, I think that I, I totally get this because this is one of the biggest frustrations for those of us who struggle with clutter, right? Like this was when my house was a hugely cluttered mess, this was my biggest frustration. I couldn't find things. I felt like when I needed to find something, it just automatically meant that my house was torn completely apart, okay? Okay. The good news is that as you declutter, this, the losing of things happens less and less. Okay. And there's, it just gets better, right? Because you're putting things, especially if you're using the no mess method, you're putting things in the place where you would look for it first. And you're getting to the point little by little where you're actually finding things in the first place where you look for them that build your confidence. You continue doing that and, and working on that. Right. Um, but what what about in these situations where maybe you're not there yet or it is this thing that, oh, my goodness, I don't even know anymore. What I do is I go through the decluttering process when I'm like, I feel like it's in this general area. And yet this general area is a mess. And so to look for this thing, I'm like, you know, making a bigger mess and I am, um, you know, ending up with feeling like I'm going back do you know what I'm talking about here? Those of you who really, truly struggle with clutter, like you're going through and you're, you know, look, moving things around and you're like, I still don't know. So I have to just keep moving things around and keep doing these things. Like we had, um, my daughter had something for her dance team that she had lost. And I was like, it has to be in the car. Like it has to be in the car. And so she had looked for it. My husband had looked for it. And I went, out to the car and I was like, oh, well, the car is a mess, right? Like this area where I was imagining it probably was, was a mess. So I was like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the decluttering process, right? I'm going to, because if I'm moving things around anyway, to try to search for something, I might as well have, number one, might as well have a trash bag in my hand, right? So that as I, so I'm pulling out any trash so that, you know, that's the first step of the decluttering process getting the trash in there, having a donate box here to where anything that just can be donated. So because it's just like going through the five step process with everything that leaves, it's a little less overwhelming to see the things that are left. It's a little easier to identify what's actually there and what to do with it. So, uh, you know, it, it's that as I'm looking for something anyway, instead where I used to just tear my house apart looking for it, I'm like, if I've got to do this anyway, I'm going to as much as possible go through the decluttering process. Now, depending on the speed and the, the search, you know, franticness of it, uh, you know, I may not be able to do the actual, where would I look for this first and take it there now about every last item. But even if I just get out the trash and the duh donations, it is amazing how much that gets rid of in these types of situations that then helps me find the thing that I'm looking for. So, so when I get into that franticness, I'm like, I'm going to do the no mess process on this space where it could be as best I can so that I am not creating this big total crap right? 
All right. Um, next question. Memory me memento keepsake boxes. Okay to do separate ones for early life young married slash parenting, empty nester times of life. If you use the container concept with a small box of special memories and use that your whole life, by necessity, you have to continually erase your past as you age. Okay, this is one of those times I just want to point out that um, a lot of us who struggle with clutter, we struggle with it because we're thinking and trying to figure out how things are going to go, okay? And it, this is just, just from the experience of having answered literally thousands upon thousands of questions. I feel like that could be happening here. I'm not saying it is, but it could be happening that you're imagining how this is going to go. How is this going to work to limit to one box? Shouldn't I have this, 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 and this box? Shouldn't I blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times that overthinking happens before you actually get started, right? Here is the, the actual answer I'm going to give you, which is the container, the container, the container, meaning what space do you have to keep these keepsake boxes or a keepsake box? Like what space in your home do you have available for things that have no value other than you just don't want to get rid of it because it's a memory? right? So it's not something that can be displayed. It's not something that can be used. Those are my top things that I like to do with memory stuff is to use it for display or use it like physically actually use it so that I use it up. It changes how I feel about it. And I feel like it's lived a good life, right? Uh, but what space do you have in your home for that? That does not take up the space you need for your actual life that the people in your home living right now are living right so so i'm not going to use my kitchen pantry where i need to keep my shelf stable goods i'm not going to use that for mementos okay so right i'm not going to use my pots and pans cabinet for keepsake stuff i'm not going to use my um you know space that i need in my closet for the clothes that i actually wear i'm not going to use that space for it so what space do you have to devote to that and then that space decides that so if you only have one shelf that's this big, then you have to have one memento box. If you've got a big old long shelf where you can have those boxes, great. But the first thing I would do before you get to any of this is focus on trash and donations. Get those things out of there. Because if you're looking at, oh, wow, there's piles everywhere. And I know that a lot of, I feel attached to a lot of things and there's definitely going to be stuff in here that are mementos and memories and keepsakes. And you're trying to think it ahead of time, how it's all going to play out in your mind. You're imagining there's going to be tons of stuff. So go ahead before you do any of that and start getting rid of trash and dead donations because as in dealing with easy stuff, taking things that do have established homes to those established homes. Those are the first three steps of the no mess decluttering process, right? Which you can get a printable in the, if you sign it for my newsletter, there's a link in the show notes here, right? Okay, so go ahead and do those things so that you have a much better idea of what you're actually dealing with. And then as you get to the, where would I look for this first? By that time, which is when you would be answering with, I would look for this in my memento box you're not also looking at and overwhelmed by all this other stuff that could already be gone. So go ahead and get rid of that stuff and then es establish the home according to where would I look first for these things that have no value other than being mementos that can't be used in some other way. And what is the reality of that space where I would look for it? And then that, that answers this question. Okay. Uh, but make sure you're not asking the question before you've actually gotten started. Right. Okay, uh, let's see. When following your five steps, I take the item to the area it needs to be. It is already filled to the brim. This always stumps me. How do I handle a house that is filled up to the max? Okay, so I did a video on this maybe week before last. So it's one of my most recent um, Thursday videos. And the answer is 
that you remove something to create the space for this item. You're not going to leave this space that is filled to the max or filled to the brim. You're not going to leave that space any worse, but we're also not going to get distracted by that space. So things need to leave it because you just said it's to the brim, to the max. Things need to leave, like leave the house. So instead of just moving things around all the time, things need to leave because there is too much. So look for trash or a dead donation in that space that will create the space for this item. This space where the item is going is still a disaster, right? Okay, but it's not worse because you've gotten rid of trash or dead donations, something to create the space for that. So you are moving your whole house forward by a step. Then that item uh, or the trash or the dead donation, the reason we look for those is that the trash bag and the donate box are back at the space you're originally decluttering, which takes you back to that space. Okay, uh, let's see. This is a great question that I think a lot of people struggle with here. Oh my goodness, I keep going to the wrong things. Um, I'm procrastinating cleaning anything aside from doing the dailies until I've reached my clutter threshold. Decluttering is going well, but I want to everything to be perfect before I clean the shower or the really gross inside of the refrigerator. How do I break through this mental block? Um, so in how to manage your home without losing your mind, which is, um, that book right there. Uh, I talk about, um, like cleaning routines, you know, what works for me, because the reality is the cleaning does need to be happening, right. For you to feel good about your house. And so any time where I am like, I'm not going to do any of this until any of this very necessary thing until I've completely finished this. Well, decluttering is never going to be done anyway, right? So there's value in the cleaning and often the cleaning will help motivate the decluttering because as you're cleaning, it can help, um, you know, identify, oh, wait, there's things here that I didn't think was clutter, but now that I'm cleaning underneath it and I pick up the shampoo bottle, I realize, oh, it's empty, <laughs> right? Okay, that you know, just little things like that can trigger. Um, the other thing that I would say on this is to embrace half high knee cleaning. Is that okay to say? Um, there's a way that y'all would understand better what I'm saying, but I don't say that word. So uh, half high knee cleaning, halfway cleaning, just do a little bit, do something, clean it. Because the problem too, a lot of times when you say really gross or, you know, clean the shower, is if you've been in a situation where you've been completely overwhelmed by your house to the point where you're stuck and not doing anything, um, it can send you into this, like, I'm not paying attention. I'm not paying attention. It's too much. It's too much. And that the cleaning is overwhelming too, right? So with whatever you've got, whatever you have to scrub or spray or whatever, as long as it's not going to like react and, you know, be things that shouldn't be used together. Um, do a half high knee clean, half bow high knee clean. I don't know, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, just do something, do a little bit and get over this idea on some sort of a routine as best you can. Like whether it's going to be, I'm going to do this on Tuesdays in the bathroom. I'm just going to sort of kind of clean the shower. I'm going to spray a little bit and I'm not going to worry about getting all the stuff that's built up over time. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to kind of sort of do this thing as best I can. Right. And that is going to take you, you know, much uh, farther in all this. Okay. Last one from those that have been asked ahead of time. Uh, in view of the current economic climate, which I don't speak on because I'm not want somebody to talk about that kind of stuff or pay much attention. Should we really be getting rid of spare and what if stuff as it's getting more and more expensive to replace? Okay, this is a great question because I know a lot of people struggle with this, right? Um, I struggle with this big time. I mean, my frugality is honestly was one of the reasons my house was a disaster because of my uh, concern about this, this type of thing, right? is like, well, but what if I don't have the money in the future and blah, blah, blah. I had to accept that I was wasting a lot of money paying rent or mortgage on space that I couldn't actually use. 
because it was so full of stuff. And so it's that shifting of where am I placing my value? Am I placing the value on being able to use this space? Because if you can't walk through your home, you are wasting money. Even if your home is completely paid off, you're wasting money on the taxes, blah, blah, blah. Any money that is going into your home, you are wasting if you can't use your home, right? So it's that shifting into that. The best way that I found to do that though was to declutter, right? Like by decluttering, I opened up space and went, oh my goodness, my house is actually, I'm getting my money's worth out of my house now because of this. So it, it's that shifting of that. The other thing I would say on this too is to make sure, because a lot, of, a lot of times, just like obsessing over the one category of item that really stresses you out, makes you not do anything, I would be sure that you say, okay, maybe that's true. And yet I'm going to look for trash, actual trash that in my current state of mind, my current philosophies, blah, 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 that I am going, that I see as trash right now, not convincing myself, oh, that's actually trash. No, like actual trash. Go ahead and get rid of actual trash. All right, go ahead and deal with the actual easy stuff that has an established home. And I'm going to face the reality of that space when I get there. Okay, great. I am going to go ahead and get rid of the duh donations, right? Things that obviously can go because doing that is what changes your view of your space and your stuff and the value and all that. And when those three things are things that don't even fit into this category. Okay. There, but so many times when we start obsessing over, this is going to be hard at this point, then we ignore all the things that we could be doing, the trash, the easy stuff and the dead donations. And that that's really valuable. Okay. Uh, now I will take some questions from those of you who are watching live. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I have never heard you address how to declutter when married to a hoarder. They reorganize their stuff over and over and over, but are mentally unable to get rid of it. Any suggestions? Yeah. So basically I only teach what you can do, right? Like that's, and I know it's, I know it's difficult, but I'm not a mental health professional. Um, I'm assuming you're not as well. And so that you can only do what you can do. And it is difficult. Everybody in every relationship has something that is a challenge. It is. And I know, and I'm not acting like, oh, it's no big deal. It's a big deal. And I know it's hard. And I want to validate that it is really, really hard. Okay. And yet you can only do what you can do. And so it's that getting rid of your own stuff. I know that, you know, hoarding disorder is a real thing. And it may be something where you do need to go into some sort of counseling. Maybe it would be counseling for you. And this is just me, you know, what I've heard other people advise, you know, for counseling, but counseling for you and maybe couples counseling, whatever, if you're able to do that, that possibly could lead into some, some counseling for the specific, you know, issue that your, your spouse is facing. But, um, but as far as like, what can you do that I can advise you to do? It's get rid of your own stuff and deal with your own things and no guarantees, but so I hear from so many people who say, I didn't think it would make a difference. And yet I did start worrying about my own stuff. And eventually the spouse started to get, I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect and wonderful and easy, but yeah. So, but I, I would, I would recommend going into some sort of um, mental health counseling for you that would then help uh, you to be able to understand and deal with maybe what, what they're dealing with. Let's see. We have a vacation property that has very old stuff, 30 plus year old falling apart furniture that falling apart furniture that we want to refresh. We're decluttering our main home tips for deciding what to take to vacation home. Yes. One in one out. And the beauty of a vacation property is that for most situations, it's a little minimal, right? Like that's what a lot of us love about an Airbnb or a vacation property is that we get to keep it minimal, right? And you kind of go, oh, that's right. When I go stay at this place or at this cabin, I remember, oh yeah, I'm fine. I can manage with two knives and not 17 knives or whatever. So it's a, a lot of times it's a good, you know, reality check for us. 
But as you do that, um, as you're doing what you're doing and you're like, I am getting rid of my stuff. Oh, and I want to update that stuff anyway. So I'm going to, um, you know, send my stuff from home there one in one out. So it's like, if something is leaving your house, if a chair is leaving your house to go to the vacation thing, then a chair needs to leave. Okay. Uh, so it's really viewing that as a container. I'm not just going to add to it because that's going to cause it to get out of control. Right. And so it's, I'm going to replace things with the stuff that I'm bringing out of my home. I think that's what you're asking. Uh, let's see. Dana, you just helped me complete my half marathon. Lots of hours on the treadmill with you on my earbuds. Well, that's awesome. Me helping people complete marathons. That's kind of amazing and hilarious, but I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's see. My mother-in-law was recently diagnosed with dementia. I'm very sorry to hear that. And is now in a home on meds. The kids want to sell her apartment and put all her stuff in storage. How do I convince them to declutter first? Um, I'm going to speak as a daughter-in-law and just say that um, this is tough because there's dynamics here, right? And you know some things. And so what I would do is very, uh, with low expectations, share what you know right? Because ultimately this is their decision, right? I'm assuming the, the, the kids and then you're, you're a spouse of, of one of the kids with low expectations say, you know, I really, you know, what if I'm happy to come help? Let's, um, you know, let's, let's go ahead and get rid of the trash and the obviously nobody want, and she probably wouldn't want anyway. Uh, let's get rid of that. I sure hope this is working. Is it freezing? Did it freeze? I hope not. Am I unfrozen now? Okay. All right. I'll go back a little bit just in case. It says I'm still live and going. Uh, okay. So um, because you're the daughter-in-law, low expectations on how everybody's going to take this, right? I'm just saying this as a daughter-in-law who it's not great to, you know, walk in and be like, I know everything that just rarely goes well in these situations. Right. But instead to say, Hey, um, you know, before we do this, can we, uh, get rid of the trash first? Let's just go ahead and let's just look for trash. Let's just do a trash run. Everybody grab a bag, throw away anything so that we're not paying for that storage. Right. Okay. Is there anything here that obviously, um, obviously is a donation, you know, let's go ahead and get that out of here. So we're not doing, you know, so just kind of lead them through the process without saying everybody, there's a process I got to tell you about it. If you're able to do that, but I would also again, say low expectations. All right. Uh, thank y'all for letting me know that I'm back. Um, struggling to justify getting rid of big things, air fryer, a side table baskets, the what if things from under my sink. Okay. I will just give you the beauty of a big thing gone is big space left behind. Try it with one. Try it with the thing that you're like, oh, I definitely don't want that thing. Say, so I'm just going to get rid of this one thing instead of committing to getting rid of a bunch of big things, right? So low commitment, no commitment. I'm going to get rid of one most obvious for sure needs to go. I'm going to get rid of that one thing. And then look at the impacts that it has. You know, that's one of my biggest pieces of advice. If you want to make immediate fast impact get rid of a big item it is exciting and amazing what what can happen there okay uh let's see halfway through a remodel feeling frazzled keep decluttering or wait until after the remodel i'm never going to say wait i'm going to say declutter as much as you can i, I mean like declutter you know, go hard on the trash and the dead donations. Uh, it, it, remodeling is really, really hard, but but never wait on decluttering if you possibly could declutter. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, my mom wants my help organizing, but won't declutter. Her house is almost quarter level. How do I help when what she wants is contrary to how I declutter? Um, this is tough, right? I, I mean, this is, you're in a difficult situation. She's asked for your help. Uh, so 
go through the decluttering process without telling her we are decluttering. Okay. Just say, okay, so you want to organize this space? All right. Um, okay. Is there any trash that we can get out before then? Because obviously we don't want to organize the trash, right? Okay. Is there any trash? All right. Okay. Uh, is there anything in here that belongs somewhere else? You know, I'll take it there for you right now. Okay. This, okay. That actually goes there. Okay. Do that. You know, okay. Uh, is there, is there anything in here that is an obvious donation to you? No. Okay. All right. Let's get organized. If you needed this item, where would you look for it first? Because that's how you're going to be able to find things in the future, which is the goal of being organized, right? Like she wants to be organized. So, you know, we're just, so just go through the process of decluttering without telling her, without getting her to get on board with decluttering first. Like this is the, this is how we organize. I mean, this way of decluttering achieves the purposes that she wants of organizing, right? Okay, and then go through that as much as you can. And then if everything in here is stuff that she would look look for here first, she says, uh, because there was no trash and no blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Um, all right, well, let's see. It doesn't all fit. So, um, you know, what are your least favorite ones? And let's get rid of those until, so just go through that process without having to get her on board or explain to her, this is decluttering, you have to declutter first. And it's hard with your mom, right? And that's the beauty of using the process is it lets her be the one making the decisions and it's all based on facts and reality. So not that it's easy, not that it's easy. Let's see. Looking, if you have um, already asked a question, go ahead and ask it again. Do you believe that thinking in terms of Swedish death cleaning is a good guide to decluttering? And imagine if any family members would want it when I'm gone. Um, I So I've never read the book. I, I've never like researched it at all. So I don't know anything other than just like what people have told me, right? And what you're saying here. Um, Imagine if any family members would want it when I'm gone. I am going to say imagining no, because imagination is what got me into this mess, right? Like I can imagine all kinds of things, right? And I can also imagine myself getting my feelings hurt and being wrong or whatever. So instead, uh, and I'm not saying don't, if that works for you, great. Like if it works, keep doing that. That's wonderful. Um, but what I would say is instead to just be like, okay, where would I look for this first for the things that I imagine myself one day gracing the family with, right? Okay, where would I look for this first? And then, oh, I would look for this first in this closet. That's where I'm going to, you know, put these things that I don't actually need, but I think are family heirlooms and somebody's going to want one day. And then let that closet be the deciding factor, right? Like let this, this space where I'm going to look for these, how much space do I have for these types of things that I actually don't want in my house, but they are family heirlooms, whatever. Okay. I, I'm going to let that space make that hard decision for me. Um, because anytime that I'm letting myself just imagine or what if, and all that kind of stuff, it just spins out for me. And so I need to not do that. Uh, what help question one. Okay. What help do you actually want from me? Question two, I will do exactly that. And when you become frustrated, you will let me know so I can back off right. Um, I think maybe that's answering somebody else's question. Sorry. <laughs> I saw the cue. Oh, hi, y'all. That's funny. Uh, let's see. Um, I have severe ADHD. Your process works amazing for me. I find I use it over and over again in the same space because the repeated exposure makes things I previous, pro, bleh, previously thought I should keep. Um, I love it. Give more. Yeah. Love it. Um, declutter a lot. Already trying to continue with uh quick okay i'm so confused okay declutter a lot already trying to continue with quick wins have already doing dead donations and trash any areas you suggest for quick wins yeah um i, I think that uh bathrooms tend to have a lot of trash 
right? And so um, pantries, like pantries, medicine cabinets, stuff like that, where it's expiration date based is a, is kind of one of those nice little dividing lines that makes it easier. Okay. My husband cannot let go of his military career paperwork and memorabilia. He took over two closets in the two guest rooms. How do I gently convince him to make space for things that I actually use? Okay. Um, I would declutter your own stuff first. I, I mean, this is, this is one question when you have literally decluttered every single thing of your own and like legitimately actually decluttered every single thing of your own. That's one question, but most of the time there's still stuff that you could declutter and you could devote to another thing. I mean, this is two closets and two guest rooms, which means that those spaces, you know, are somewhat available, right? And and these things are very, very important to him. And so it's like, okay, he, it sounds like maybe he's got his things contained to that. Do you wish that you had those open for other things? Possibly, but I would really, really drill down on decluttering your own things. Get rid of some stuff. Let him see you get rid of some stuff that he would have never thought you would ever get rid of because you need space for these other things. But so many times it's like, why do you need that kind of stuff? I could be putting my stuff there. And then that ends up, turn, you know, when they're like, um, anyway, it's just, it's, yeah. Okay. Danny, your take it there now. Work's been gardening too. No more big piles to deal with when you are tired. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, let's see. Oh, these are the big ones. Uh, I have a lot of things I bought over the years, but nothing is really sentimental. I bought the things because I either needed or wanted them. How do you start decluttering those things? I'm so attached to everything and find it wasteful to just donate or get rid of it. My kids won't want them. They're adult kids. And I know they will want all new stuff. It bothers me when I already have something and they go out and buy a new one anyway, please. Um, okay. So go through the decluttering process, start in the most visible space. Uh, it, it, it feels like you're thinking ahead to how it's going to go and what it's going to be like, go ahead and start in the most visible space, start with the trash, start through these things. And, and when I say trash, I mean, actual trash. So you're not going, Oh, it feels wasteful to trash this thing. And you're talking about your Stanley cup. And I'm like, no, I'm talking about an actual gum wrapper. You know what I mean? Like, so, so go ahead and deal with the trash, deal with the dead donations, things that you can let yourself get rid of. And then according to every, you know, ask yourself the question about every last thing. If I needed this item, where would I look for it first? Take it there now. Is there any room for it there? No, there's not because there's all this other kind of stuff. Oh, well, what deserves space less than this that I can go ahead and get rid of and just blame the space. So like go through the decluttering process to the point where you are blaming the space. As you do this, you're going to actually know where things are and be able to put your hands on them and have spaces for the things that you do have, which then your kids are going to have a better understanding of what's actually in your house where they're like, she'll never be able to find any way. I'm not going to ask her or whatever. Or, you know, you go through this. I, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Can you talk about chef's stuff shifting and how it keeps you trapped in a cycle? Yeah. I mean, like if you're not actually getting rid of things, your house is not actually getting easier to manage, right? Like if you're just moving things from one space, like, okay, I know I want this thing, but I don't know where it should go. So I'm going to stick it in that guest room or stick it in that office or stick it in that whatever. Well, then that room becomes a cluttered mess, right? And then, okay, I'm going to work in there. And I, I'm not really, the way that you stop the cycle is to take it somewhere, make a real home for it, by creating the space for it, by getting rid of something else. So something is actually leaving, leaving your house. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Where do you go after the most visible space? You go to the next most visible space. So uh, in my house, my most visible space is my entryway. 
And then I could go two directions from there. Uh, but I am going to, I go into my living room from the entryway. So the entryway is first. And then the next space that guests would see, be most likely to see in my house, the living room for, for me and my home, whatever it is for you, what's the most visible to somebody coming into my house space. Um, and remember that when you do the visible space, when you follow the visibility rule, you're starting in the most visible space, the space that guests see first. And then you're inspired to declutter some more because of the visible progress that you saw. And you're like, oh, it looks so good. I want to do some more. Uh, go back to that first space. Declutter it again. It's going to feel like, oh, no, I got cluttered again. It didn't. It just has some easy stuff and trash in there now. OK, you get that stuff out and where it maybe took you three hours the first time. This time it takes you seven minutes to get it back to where it was. And then you go to the next one next space and you spend you know the time decluttering in there and then when it's time to declutter again which is sooner because you're like oh things are looking so good i'm inspired to make more progress you back to the first space spend three minutes there seven minutes in the second space and then move to the third most visible space so it go it's prioritizing according to visibility uh let's see also i have a lot of pretty things but not actually useful for example pretty pencils with diamonds at the end instead of an eraser this is just an example but should i just donate them yes mm -hmm. yes donate them people will be excited to have them okay uh let's see We had company over on Sunday. I decluttered my kitchen quick. I moved it out to lighten my eyesight. LOL, now it's cleared. Still got to make a decision, keep or let go. Does that mean you stuff shifted it? Um, I would go through, if you stuff shifted it into a box, I would go through that box because obviously these were things that didn't have an easy home in there. So you go through the box, look for trash, look for donations, look for blah, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Could you please? explain you're putting like with like so that you can ask when so that you can then ask where would i look for it take it there now nope you got those switched the two decluttering questions become comes before putting like with like okay so uh you're going through your items where would i look for this first you get things out of there that don't need to be there by the time you're putting like with like you are down to only the things that you would look for first in this actual space OK, so you've gotten other things out of there. That doesn't mean that when you pick something up and say, where do I look for this first? Oh, here, you don't just put it next to something else that's like it. That's fine. But those two things are flipped. My mom wants a. Oh, do I need to read this with an accent? Because you said mom instead of mom. It's so hard not to. But anyway, I won't. I won't do that to you. all Sorry. Um, I hope everybody understands. I'm trying to be funny when I say that kind of stuff. Uh, my mom, mom wants a stress-free house, but owns multiple of the same item. 13 chopping boards. My mom had nine cutting boards in her lake house. So I get this and over 30 pans. She doesn't have space for, she sees it as throwing away useful items. First of all, we're not, we don't have to throw things away, but we can donate them. Right. And uh, the thing I would do first is go through the actual process because that's going to get rid of things. Maybe there are some dead donations that she is get, willing to get rid of. And then remember the beauty of it is, answer is always yes but we're using the container as the limit right and so it becomes a it's like okay where would you look for your cutting boards first here okay all right oh well here's another cutting board you don't even have to ask at that point because it's the cutting boards right so let's go put okay let's put that wow okay now this space where you would look for cutting boards first is full yeah okay well let's get rid of your least favorites so they're still favorites and you still love them all, but this is the space and you get to blame the space, right? So you blame the space because now everything's together in the place where you would look for it first and you let that space be the, the deciding factor. Uh, let's see. I live in 800 square feet plus some storage space with husband and four kids. The constant influx of stuff is overwhelming. Help for getting burnt out of being ruthless. Um, I, I just think there's not a choice between being ruthless. And I, I think it's that going with, it is valid. It's a valid strategy to make do. 
And the more that you do that and you go, oh, I just made do in this situation, meaning like I just lived without something. And then it's like, well, what else could I make do without? You know, that kind of thing, really going hard on the, you know, even further so that as things ebb and ebb and flow, there's some margin in there for it to have the ebb and flow within. Do you have exist? Do you have pre-existing list of easy stuff for my kids to follow? They do better with specific instructions. I have dirty laundry, dirty dishes and toys that belong somewhere else. Anything else? No, I mean, I think that's great. You know, like those, those are the easy things. So yeah, I mean, I think listing those out for your kids, it, laundry is easy. You know, one of my examples I always give is you look at the laundry room, it's completely overwhelming and you're like, oh no, I don't know what to do. And you're like, what is easy? Well, the laundry all over the floor is easy. It just needs to go in the laundry hamper. Okay. So we, we do that. Um, let's see. I love this. Dana has so many videos on YouTube. You can watch them every day while you declutter or do the dishes or fold laundry. Love it. Uh, let's see how to organize a garage. Hubby doesn't declutter, but I can't find things when I need them. Same way as you declutter any other space. And that is start with the trash. Um, yeah, start with the trash, easy stuff like, oh, okay, with what you can access right there without pulling everything out and then just work through the process. I know it's easier said than done. I know it is. Okay, um, it's time for me to go. This has been fun. And don't forget that if you would like to, um, oops, I don't know what I just did here. You would like to ask questions for future lives. If you're watching this as a replay, I am going to ask danakwhite.com. And if you want a printable of the five-step process that I mentioned again and again, go to aslobcomesclean.com slash five. And if you're interested in being a, a patron, um, we have a lovely, lovely Facebook group of people who are supportive and who uh, like to post their own pictures and progress pictures that is very inspiring to see everybody working on their homes. And we all speak this language. Like we talk about the take it there now. You're, it's it's not like other groups where you're going to talk about something and people are like, oh, well, you know, you have to pull everything out. Of, no, like everybody's a lot on the same page here on how we talk about this kind of stuff and the, the value of taking it there now. And all. So, uh, all right. I will talk to y'all. I think I'll be here next week. Yeah. Okay, talk to y'all later. Bye.